Hi, I'm Jack Spittler. I want to share with you in the next few minutes what has come to be an extremely important part of the handling of pelletized plastic resin. My purpose is to clarify what might be termed popular misconceptions. First, the transloading of plastic pellets can be classified in two general categories. Dilute phase, meaning more air, less product, higher velocity, and lower pressures. And then dense phase, meaning less air, more product, lower velocity, and higher pressures. In the early days, not much attention was paid to pellet transfer velocities. Back then, higher velocity meant getting the job done more quickly. Dilute phase transfers were the standard process. In recent years, the development of newer, softer materials has created a problem in the industry. To prevent damage to the product and to still make efficient use of the transfer time, new methods were required. Dense phase unloading became that needed improvement with less air, more product, and more importantly, lower velocity, which meant higher pressure. Of course, there are many other transfer problems with the newer materials, such as misalignment of piping joints and connectors, which creates chips and fines, and truck blower heat, which created softer material and melting into clumps and agglomerates, and then long sweeping bends in hard transfer piping, which created more friction and more heat, making more deposits of soft material in the piping. And in turn, angel hair, streamers, snake skins, coating the piping and eventually dislodging to clog downstream processing equipment. The good news is this, misaligned piping joints and connectors can easily be realigned. And air coolers can reduce the heat from your blower and gamma bins and right angle bins can replace the long sweeping turns and piping. And most importantly, transfer friction can be reduced dramatically by changing from dilute phase to dense phase transloading. Jack Hilbert of Pneumatic Conveying Consultants said it best, pressure doesn't damage pellets, velocity does. The American Chemistry Council or ACC and the American Plastics Council, or APC, merged in 2002. And it now includes the nation's 22 leading manufacturers of plastic resin. In their joint report, they put it this way. The reduction in pellet velocity minimizes the generation of angel hair, fines and clumps. At the same time, the increase in the amount of product in the line increases the product per minute to the silo. And in most cases, the total delivery time is faster. And they went on to say for harder plastics such as HDPE and PET, product velocity in the pipe is the largest single cause of fines generation. There are several misconceptions or misperceptions concerning product transfers. According to the ACC APC, in the past few years, many of the generally accepted operating practices regarding the unloading of dry plastic pellets have been recognized to not always be the best practices for avoiding product degradation. And that brings us to this. Beliefs we have found to be in error. Misperception number one. Low pressure in truck unloading lines is necessary to minimize speed or heat friction from pellets brushing against pipes. Wrong. Misperception number two. High pressure in truck unloading lines increases the velocity of the pellet moving through the delivery line or creates heat. Wrong. Misperception number three. High pressure on the delivery line will pressurize the silo and or increase the volume of air going into the silo. Wrong. Misperception number four, moving product through long or horizontal unloading lines does not degrade product. Wrong. Misperception number five, taking more time to deliver the product is better than less. Wrong. And finally, misperception number six, it's not important how fast you run the blower on the truck as long as you maintain low pressures. Wrong again. Many of these erroneous beliefs, unfortunately, are still out there. 
One interesting recommendation by the APC ACC addresses pressures. If the trailer has an air cooler, the driver can put the maximum pressure required to create a dense phase environment in the trailer, up to about 12 PSI of pressure, and unload with approximately a pressure difference of only one PSI between the trailer and the conveying line. To do this, the driver puts a large amount of product in the unloading line. This creates more pressure, but it also slows the velocity of the product moving through the delivery line substantially. An air cooler eliminates the heat caused by the blower, which is the only other source of heat other than product friction. In explaining how the dense phase process can be confusing based on traditional dilute phase thinking, they said this, for dense phase product transfer, there is an inverse relationship between pressure on the product delivery line and the product speed in the delivery line. Let me say that again. For dense phase product transfer, there is an inverse relationship between pressure on the product delivery line and the product speed in the delivery line. When delivering product in conditions where the blower speed is constant, the more pressure, the slower the product moves. The less pressure, the faster the product moves. In situations where blower speeds are variable, like hopper truck deliveries, a good general rule of thumb is run the blower at the lower end of the operating range and increase line pressure by increasing product flow. You must do both. I think it's important to understand the effect of heat on plastic pellets. The following data is extracted from the ACC APC chart of the temperatures that will begin to soften pellets and create major problems. Low density polyethylene or LDPE, 185 degrees. Linear low density polyethylene or LLDPE, 220 degrees. High density polyethylene or HDPE, 255 degrees. PET, 280 degrees Fahrenheit. There's almost a 100 degree difference between LDPE and PET's softening temperature. LDPE is very sensitive to heat, while on the other end, PET is much less sensitive to heat, although there's still some cause for concern. Here is an example of overheating LDPE. This is an elbow from the trailer's bottom line, expensive and time consuming. I think it's most important to remember three things. First, that the most efficient way to transfer plastic pellets and avoid degradation of the product is to understand that dense phase unloading is the best solution. And second, that pressure's basically immaterial. And third, that dense phase unloading is an art, not a science. It depends basically on the driver achieving a flutter or what might sound like slugs of product moving through the line, short of plugging the line, of course. Once this minor pulsing or throbbing is attained, dense phase is happening efficiently and safely. I hope this has been helpful. If there are any questions, please address them to me at jspittler at customcommodities.com. And be safe out there.